Okay, so hi guys and welcome back. What we have here today is the Hapson H111D Nano FPV quadcopter. As far as I know, this is the smallest ready-to-fly FPV quadcopter, which still supports analog 5.8 GHz video. This means you can fly it with your regular FPV goggles, which is pretty awesome. Today, we will take a look at what's inside the box and then take it out flying. I will show you plenty of FPV video, both from the video receiver, which is built into the transmitter, and also from my Quanum Cyclops goggles, where I record using the Tiny HM DVR. As you can see, the copter itself is absolutely tiny. In front, you can see the tiny camera. On the back, we see the LiPo connector, which is used to charge the small LiPo cell inside the copter. Here you can see the bottom of it, which features a small on-off switch. The tiny copter comes at a flying weight of only 18.34 grams, including the battery, which is absolutely amazing for a 5.8 GHz FPV quadcopter. It comes with a USB charging cable as well as spare props. This is the radio, which features a large built-in uh, LCD screen for flying FPV. You can also insert a micro SD card, which will enable you to record your FPV flights. After that, you can copy them to your computer through this USB port. The radio needs four uh, uh, AA batteries, which are not included. Before we go and fly, let's take a closer look at the radio. After turning it on, it will show the bind to plane <laughs> screen. You then just need to turn on the quadcopter and it will bind automatically. You can then immediately see the FPV video on the monitor. And well, as you can see here, I take this opportunity to show uh, the advantage of using 5.8 GHz analog video. I am checking the latency here, and as you can see, there is no noticeable latency, which is awesome for flying this, because you will be able to fly much faster and much more precise than with the digital 2.4 GHz video download, which is offered by similar toys. This, the 5.8 GHz FPV video, is a huge advantage and a big plus for the Hapson. Now we take a look at the other features of the radio. Long pressing the right uh, stick gets us into this menu. Here we can play uh, previous recordings, set the time, format the SD card, which I'm doing right now in the video, reverse the sticks, set the sensitivity of the sticks, and also set the 5.8 GHz frequency, which is quite interesting. Uh, as you can see, we are now going through all of the supported frequencies which are, uh, are supported by this copter. As you can see, as we uh, switch the frequency in the radio, the video transmitter in the quadcopter also switches the, to the new frequency. This is actually a pretty awesome feature which they built into this tiny quadcopter. Uh, here I go through all the frequencies to well, just to show you the supported channels in case you want to fly it with your own FPV goggles and want to know if it's compatible. As you can see, it supports the full range from uh, 5730 MHz to 5845 MHz in 5 MHz steps. So that's a quite large area. But now let's go flying. <laughs> On this first flight, I fly it using the built-in FPV monitor. I am using my Runcam 2 HD to record this and overlay it with the video recorded in the radio. You can again see how absolutely tiny this quadcopter is. In the video, the screen looks a bit dark, but this is not an issue when you view it in person. You can uh, see it perfectly fine, even in bright sunlight. And, well, it is actually flying great. Flying it through the monitor is not only possible, but also really fun. The, the really low latency 5.8 GHz FPV downlink helps a lot here. It, it feels much more like a, a real hobby-grade copter 
than those uh, 2.4 gigahertz video uh, toys which I reviewed lately. Of course, at only 18 grams weight, the copter is quite wind sensitive. That's just physics, you know. It still flies fine, although I do get some oscillations when descending. The copter currently unfortunately does not feature acro mode, so I have to fly it in self level. I really hope there will be a hack or something about this soon, because flying this tiny copter in acro mode, well, that would be awesome. That would be absolutely awesome. <laughs> Finally, let's bring the little guy home for a perfect table landing. Let's go straight to my second flight now, where I actually use my Quanum Cyclops FPV goggles instead of the built-in monitor. The autoscan of the Cyclops immediately picked up the correct frequency and the image quality is actually pretty good for such a tiny 5.8 GHz copter. Very flyable and, and even easier to fly and more precise to fly than just using the monitor. So that works really, really great. The expert mode, which is available by pressing the right stick shortly, actually provides good control over it, even in the wind. This, this mode allows the copter to fly at a steeper angle and thus provides more control for more experienced pilots. In my opinion, the quality of the FBB video is, is quite okay, actually good, and perfectly allows you to fly. As for robustness, so far it's also holding up great. I had plenty, plenty, plenty of crashes and not even a prop was damaged. I also flew it indoors uh, quite a bit, where I first thought that the missing prop savers might be an issue. But thanks to the low weight of this, that was not an issue. Uh, I crashed it really a lot indoors as well and, and I'm still on my first set of props. I think it's low weight makes this very hard to damage actually. Similar to the to the small Chearson CX-10 copters. Uh, those also don't have any prop safers and still you can fly them indoors absolutely fine and you will very very uh, rarely break a prop. So let's conclude. <laughs> In my opinion this is the best ready to fly FPV nanocopter which you can currently get if you want ready to fly. If you are ready to build one your own, a completely self-built one will uh, still perform better and also allow you to fly in raid mode. But for a ready to fly package, the Hubson is really awesome, especially since it provides analog 5.8 GHz video. That is a great plus. It's a tiny quadcopter with a quiet long flight time actually, complete FPV set and even a built-in DVR and that all for less than 100 uh, bucks, for less than 100 US dollars. This is in my opinion very good value for what you pay. Well, I think that concludes the video. Hope you liked this video and if you did, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe. If you have any questions, please ask them below in the comments and I will try to answer them. Many thanks for watching and see you next time.